Hey guys, I know it's been a long time since I uploaded a video, but I'm trying to get the hang of some new video editing software, um, which is taking a little longer than expected because I don't have as much time to play around with it as I'd like. Uh, but I wanted to get a video out anyway because uh, this really sh shouldn't require much. Um, it shouldn't take so long to get this video out because it's just about a bit very basic type of cipher. Now. Uh, I'm calling it cryptograms, but really a cryptogram is more of a broad term that applies to all uh, a, a variety of simple ciphers. Uh, but specifically, I want to talk about the basic substitution cipher. Now, this is a form of monoalphabetic substitution cipher in which each letter is arbitrarily replaced with another uh, letter. And by monoalphabetic, there's two different types of substitution ciphers, monoalphabetic and polyalphabetic. Uh, all you need to know at the moment is that a monoalphabetic substitution cipher is one in which each letter of the plain text is replaced with one of the letters in the cipher text, and this replacement is done consistently throughout the text. In other words, if we replace A with J, um, then all A's are going to be replaced with J's, and that's going to be consistent throughout the text. A is never going to be replaced with B or M or anything like that. It's always going to be replaced with J. Uh, so this is a form of monoalphabetic substitution, in which each letter is arbitrarily assigned to another letter. This kind of cipher is notoriously easy to crack by hand, and that's exactly what we're doing right here. There's this website called cryptograms.org. Uh, it's, it's a great website to go to because they'll just give you a quote. They'll tell you the source of the quote, which is a good example of a context clue for uh, cryptology. Um, Basically, this helps us. If you know who the author of the quote is, then you know who uh, you, you've got a bit of a subject matter hint uh, as to the content of the message. Now, this is a good one because it's very long, which means we've got all kinds of uh, all kinds of letters in it, and this means that the letters are going to reflect uh, the letter frequencies of English. Um, we're assuming that this quote is in English. As far as I know, it's going to be in English. Uh, but basically, different languages. Uh, will have different, um, each letter is used a different, sort of a different amount than other letters. In English, E is the most common letter, for example, whereas a letter like X is relatively uncommon. So if you have a lot of text, the greater your sample size of the cipher text, the better your statistical analysis is going to be. But from this, we can basically make an educated guess and say that one of the most frequently used letters in the cipher text is probably going to be E. Now, it's not going to look like an E because it's been replaced, but the letter frequencies are still going to be the same because since each letter is replaced with a different letter in the alphabet, the letter frequencies are still going to be preserved. They're just going to be masked over with new letters, if that makes sense. In this case, for example, we look at the uh, stats written over here. We got some frequency analysis uh, done for us already, and we can see that L is the most frequently used letter uh, in this entire message. So we could take a guess right now and say that L... Uh, is the crypt, uh, the uh, ciphertext version of E. So we could replace all the L's with E's if we want. There's also some other clues. In this message, you see that we've got punctuation marks uh, and also the spaces, uh, which I guess are a form of punctuation, uh, that give us more clues as to the content of the message because we've got things like, like this right here. This J, it's a single letter word by itself, a one one letter word. In English, there are two one-letter words, I and A. Those are pretty much the only one-letter words you're going to encounter. Uh, so that gives us a big hint. We know this is a vowel, and we know it's either I or A. So that rules out J, even though, because you see, L is one of the most frequently, is the most frequently used letter. Uh, P is com comes in second at 16, and J comes in third at 15. Any one of those could theoretically be E, but now we know that J cannot be E because J is either I or A. Now, which uh, vowel is more frequent, I or A? Uh, you could look up a chart that tells you uh, which one's more frequent, but generally you want to avoid doing frequency analysis when your sample size is relatively small. Um, here we can, we can, we've got a relatively large quote to work with, uh, but let's go ahead and take a stab at it. I honestly don't know what the content of this quote is. Uh, I just refreshed this page uh, right before I started the video. So let's find out. Okay, so J is going to be either an I or an A. So let's let's try an A for a second. If we say that it's A, 
And then let's take a, a guess and say that L is E because it's the second uh, most, or it is the most frequently used letter. So we put an E there. Okay, here's a three letter word ending in E. There, there's a good chance that it's the word the because it's an extremely common word uh, ending in E in the English language. So what if we said, took a guess and said that it's T H E. Now you'll notice that a lot of uh, solving this kind of thing is just trial and error. Like put things in and see what makes sense. If you put you know certain letters in and then you look at other parts of the text and you see that there are combinations that that don't make any sense. Like if, if we put something in and had a two letter word that was like J M, there's you know, a slim chance that that's uh, you know what's the what the person intended to say like their initials or something. Uh, but it's highly unlikely. It's more likely that we made a mistake somewhere. So right now, I'm not seeing anything that indicates we've made a mistake. I, see, I can see the word at right here, which is a valid word that could that could be here. Uh, right here, we've got something interesting. This word here is exactly the same as this word here, if you look at the cipher text on both of them. So it's something that's repeated. Let's see. H-A. What's a word that begins with H-A? Something like Sometimes I like to look at the, the amounts of letters in the words. Uh, and sort of imagine what could sort what kind of sentence could sort of be structured there, which kind of gives you a clue as to where where nouns are and where verbs might be. It it kind of something you have to kind of get a feel for because it's not there are no hard and fast rules for determining something like that. Okay, here's a, a two letter word beginning with T. Uh, almost in almost every case, that's going to be the word two because uh, really the next thing pretty much has to be a vowel. T-A, T-I, T-U, T-E, and T-O. Of those five, only one of them is a word uh, that is commonly used. And so we could put that in, have it be that. Now what about here, O blank. That could be, um, it could be of, it could be on, or it could be or. So it could be any of those. Let's take a look at some other areas of the text. A three-letter word beginning with A. It can be R or it can be AND. In this case, since we've already used the E somewhere else, it can't be R. Uh, it, could be, it could be other things. Um, it could be ALL, but this is not the same letter as that, so it's not ALL. Um, a good guess is going to be AND, so I'm going to put AND in real quick. And it is starting to look like we're on the right track because this word right here I kinda thought when we had the OE that this was gonna be once and it's looking more like it now so I'm gonna put the go ahead and put the C in here okay this word here looks like it's achieve so I'm gonna go ahead and write those in achieve now you're starting to see that this is really starting to come together having once decided to achieve a certain it doesn't take much more to figure this out to achieve achieve a certain task perhaps task achieve it at all here's an example of all we've got the a and then we've got two letters right there that are the same achieve it at all costs um now i'm going to guess that this is of maybe yeah cuz it can't be or anymore because of that it's probably not on but let's try of um, so the gain in self-confidence of having accomplished, so M and P, a tiresome labor is immense. So, tedium and distaste. So we check it, and it is solved. So you can kind of see that, uh, uh, okay, well, we don't have the, the thing on there anymore. So you can kind of see what goes into solving a cryptogram. We could probably go ahead and do this one real quick, uh, depending on how long this video is going on. But I just I just want to demonstrate that. Actually, before before we're done here, I want to go look at um, frequency analysis. Uh, letter frequency analysis, because this is a very useful uh, tool when solving ciphers uh, in general. Um, uh, I'd prefer to find one with graphs. Okay, here, we've got some graphs right here. Um, so let's go find a random piece of text somewhere. Random English text. In fact, random is often 
uh, random text is often very beneficial for uh, solving this. See, if we go get some random English text, as you can see, these are English words. They don't make any sense, but they're English words. So I can copy, you know, this big block of English words and stick it in here and click check frequency. What you see right here is sort of the frequency, um, letter frequencies of common English text. E is the most common letter. Uh, you can see that vowels like A, I, O, and to a lesser extent U uh, are also frequent letters. T and S, uh, N is a relatively frequent letter. And you can see that uh, letters like J and K, Q, X, Z, and to a certain extent V are relatively uncommon letters. And so what happens is if we go take some, uh, take a, a cryptogram of some kind, something that has been, that is a basic substitution cipher, let's find something, uh, and copy the text into, I don't know if I'd be able to copy it. Well, I might be able to. Uh, it's probably going to copy the letters too. Yeah, it's copying the letters. Basically, uh, I should have planned out my uh, technical aspects of this video uh, ahead of time. But basically, uh, one way that you can um, approach a simple substitution, and actually one way you can determine that a cipher is a simple substitution cipher, is that you see the general shape where we got spikes here, and then we've got these you know, lower uh, bars, and then a big spike, and lower bars, and a spike, and then lower bars like that. It's, it's relatively uneven because letter frequencies in English are uneven. Uh, that's one way you can approach a cipher and uh, that you don't know what kind of cipher is being used. You can put it through a frequency analyzer and determine, well, these look like English letter frequencies. Uh, in fact, if you're doing something like a Caesar shift, it is even more obvious because not only will you get the, the unevenness, but it will look like this except shifted over. So in other words, this spike might be moved over to and then this spike's moved over too, and these two spikes here are moved over too, then you know you're dealing with a shift like that. Uh, whereas polyalphabetic substitution ciphers, which I will go into in a future video, tend to uh, not follow the rules of uh, basic letter frequencies. So I hope this video wasn't too long. Hopefully it was uh, useful despite the uh, lack of technical um, pizzazz, for lack of a better word. Um, I hope to be able to make another video sooner um, because I'm very bad about maintaining a consistent upload schedule. But yeah, this is a basic you know, analysis of uh, some simple substitution, uh, and I hope you guys find it useful. Uh, I guess that's all I've got time for at the moment. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.